Okay then gang, so we've seen so far that we can limit the amount of Firestore documents that we retrieve and when a user wants to load more they can click on this button that does another fetch to get the next six and we show them on the page and we do that by keeping track of the latest documents and update that each time we make a fetch and then when we want to get the next batch we say to start after the latest document so we're always getting the next batch okay now instead of this being a button at the bottom to load more i'd like to make it so that this thing right here is some kind of container that you can scroll down and when you reach the bottom so reach the last current document in the container at that point it automatically goes out and fetches the next batch of data instead of a user having to click this load more button right here so the first thing i want to do is to style this container a little bit more to make it have a max height and then users can scroll down that container so we can listen for scroll events so to do that let me go to styles and the first thing i'm going to do in fact is make sure that this is display none because we're not going to be using the button anymore so i don't want it to be there so we'll do that then i'm going to go up to the top to the container and i'm going to say scroll stuff and make that comment and underneath this i'm going to say this has a max height of 80 percent so that means it's not going to be quite as tall as the browser then i'm going to say the box sizing is border box so all the padding and all that kind of stuff that is included in the total size let me spell this correctly oops not border radius border box okay and then finally i want to say overflow is going to be auto meaning there's going to be a scroll bar down the side so that we can scroll down like this okay so that looks okay but i actually want to hide this thing right here so i'm just going to paste this rule in and we're targeting this webkit scroll bar and saying display none so if i save it now we don't see that scroll bar but we can still scroll down just so it looks a bit neater if you're doing this on your website though you need to make sure that the user can scroll down this list right here because it's not immediately obvious without that scroll bar being there anyway now we've sorted that out we need to add a scroll event to this container so that when a user reaches the bottom we can then fetch more data So in order to do this, we need to take this container, which we already have right here, and we need to attach an event listener to that, which is gonna listen for scroll events. So let me take this container, and in fact, let's do a comment above this. And this comment is gonna say load more docs, but this time scroll. All right, so we take the container, add an event listener, and it's going to be a scroll event. And at that point, I want to fire a function. And that function is going to be called handle scroll. So const handle scroll and set that equal to a function. And inside this function, this is where we want to figure out is the user at the bottom of the container, right? Because if they are, if they've reached the last document, at that point, we want to then fire another fetch to get more data. Now, before we do that, let me just pass in handle scroll right here, like so and in fact i'll just say console.log scrolling and save it so we can see that this works if i make this bigger and i'm going to inspect and open up the console if i start to scroll you can see now we have that scrolling event now obviously not every time we scroll we want to fetch the data only when we scroll and we've reached the very bottom of the container so we've reached the last document that's the point that we want to fetch more data so how do we do that now there are three measurements or values that we're going to use to figure this out so imagine that this right here this is our container with an overflow set to auto so this is the scroll bar right here and this is the stuff we can see at the top and these are the ones that are hidden below but when we scroll down they would come into view so the first value that we're going to use is going to be the scroll height. Now, this is the overall height of the container content. So everything inside the container, not just the bit we see here, but everything inside the container that eventually will come into view. That is that value. The second value we're going to use is the scroll top. And that says how far we've scrolled from the top of the container. And the third value is the offset height, which is the height of the container that we see right here. 
Now with those three values, we can deduce that a user is gonna be at the bottom right here when the offset height plus the scroll top is equal to the scroll height. When that plus that is equal to that, that is when a user is at the bottom of the container, they scrolled all the way down, okay? So we can check this little equation, offset height plus scroll top is equal to scroll height. If that is true, at that point, we can then fetch data. Okay, so inside this handle scroll function, we need to figure out that little formula. We need to figure out if the scroll top of the container plus the offset height of the container is equal to or more than the scroll height of the container. At that point, that's when we need to fetch more data. So let me just paste this thing in first of all. I've created a variable called trigger height, but you can call it what you want. Then I've set that equal to container.scrolltop plus container.offset height. So that's those two things that we need to add together. Then we need to check, is this trigger height equal or more than the scroll height of the container? Well, let's see if it is. If trigger height is going to be more than or equal to container dot scroll height and by the way you probably don't need this thing right here but in case I've made some kind of error in the calculation I'll keep it in and if that's the case that means they've reached the bottom of the container they've scrolled to the bottom and so at that point we then want to get some more reviews so I'll just fire get next reviews like so that's all we need to do so if I save this now and cross my fingers then let me refresh and come to the top if I scroll down to the bottom then it's going to start getting no more reviews and we can see the reviews right here then it gets some more scroll to the bottom again and it should get some more yep it does but notice when I scroll to the bottom it doesn't get any more but if I scroll up and then scroll to the bottom again then it goes back to the beginning again so this is kind of like the same problem we had before because we're not detaching the events so much like we detach the event over here for the click event if the data was empty we need to do the same thing now for the scroll event so i can just take the container and remove the event listener like this remove event listener scroll and this was the handler function handle scroll right here so now if we try this out hopefully it's not going to do the same thing let me scroll right to the bottom and just keep loading the data and okay so this is the last lot of data if i scroll up and scroll back down we're not getting any more data awesome so that all works there's one more thing i want to do and that's just to add a little loading message at the bottom whenever we're fetching more data Okay then, so we've implemented this infinite scroll, but I want to make it now so that when we reach the bottom and we start a new fetch to get more data, we momentarily show a little loading message here so the user knows it's getting some more data before it arrives. So around about now, and then it arrives, and then now, and then it arrives, okay? So just for a split second, show that loading message. So the way we're gonna do this is by going to the HTML file first of all, and below the container, I'm going to create a div with a class of loading. And then inside, I'll say loading data or loading reviews, maybe dot, dot, dot. Now, if we save that and come over here, we can see loading reviews over here. It doesn't look great. Uh, and to be honest, to begin with, we don't want to show it at all. So let's go to styles.css and say loading is display none that's the default state right we don't want to show it to begin with we only want to show it when we reach the bottom and we start loading more data so how do we fix this well what we could do is say well we'll give this a class of active if we're fetching data so i could say loading dot active and then inside that we could display it as block so display block like so and also give it some other style so i'll say font size is bigger so two m's and then we'll say text a line is center to put it in the middle and then finally just give it some margin top so margin 10 pixels top and bottom zero left and right now if we save that we're not going to see it because it's display none by default and only display block when it has this class of active if i give it this class over here of active then we should see it at the bottom so that's what I want to show, but I only want to show it when we're actually fetching data. So let's remove that to begin with. 
and instead dynamically add this class when we start to do a fetch. So let's go over to the index.js file and we start to do a fetch whenever this function is called right here. So at that point, we could add that class, right? But before we do that, we need to get a reference to that loading div. So we'll do that at the top and I'll paste this in. I say loading is equal to document.query selector and we get the div with the class of loading, which is this thing right here. So we have a reference to that DOM element. Now inside here, we can take that when we start to do a fetch and I'm going to say we want to add a class. So we say class list dot add and the class we want to add is active, right? So now every time this function is called, and remember it's called initially when the page first loads, and then every time we scroll to the bottom, it's called again. Every time that happens, we're giving it a class of active. Now, if we save this so far, let me refresh. It's always there because we never actually remove the class again. So after the fetch is done, after we've output all the data to the DOM, at this point, we need to then take away that class, right? So let me, after we output the template, do it right here, loading.classList.remove, and we want to remove the active class. So we only show it for that small amount of time between starting the fetch and outputting the template. So let's save that and come over here and refresh. We see loading for a split second and then it goes away. And the same is going to be true when we scroll to the bottom, we see loading reviews, and then it goes away when they get here. Just so we use a nose that that's what we're doing. We're loading more reviews. Cool. So there we go. That's how to create an infinite scroll pagination system with Firebase Firestore. Now, there are other ways of doing this and other methods of pagination, like using page numbers at the bottom, like one, two, three, four, five, etc. So if that's something you'd like to see, feel free to leave a comment and let me know down below and I might be able to do that. Otherwise, please don't forget to like and share. That really helps out a lot. And I'm going to see you in the very next tutorial. So then my friends, I really, really hope you've enjoyed this series. If you do want to join the cause and support the channel, you can do by clicking the join button on the channel homepage or underneath the video right down below. You also get a little cool ninja badge next to your name in the comments for that. And it's 99 pence or cents per month. And I've also created several premium in-depth courses on Udemy. So the first one is Modern JavaScript. The second one is D3 and Firebase. And the third one is Vue.js and Firebase. So if you want to take one of those, all the links with the discounts automatically applied to them are going to be in the video description down below. So again, thanks so much for watching. And I'm going to see you in the very next course.